Howdy folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio where I'm moving forward with Thunder Mesa 2.0, the reimagining and realignment of my ON30 Thunder Mesa Mining Company layout. This week I want to take a little break from the demolition of the old layout, which I've been doing over the last couple episodes, and focus on actually building something. Specifically, I want to make a planning model of the new layout based on the plans that I've created. And that should come in really, really handy as we move forward. Now a flat two-dimensional track plan is a great place to start, but it doesn't really give you all of the information that you're going to need to build a fully fleshed out model railroad. You're going to have to figure out a lot of stuff along the way. So I find a planning model to be super helpful in this regard, especially if you've got a lot of vertical scenery, which I like, you know, deep canyons, tall mountains, and that kind of stuff. And a planning model can be as basic or as complicated as you want it to be. And models like this are usually made from uh, cardboard, foam core. Some people like to use clay or, or Sculpey or something like that to, to, to flesh them out, to flesh out the, the scenic details. I don't always build a planning model when starting on a new layout project. Uh, sometimes the layout's just really simple, like the Santa Fe and St. Nick, which is just a loop of track. Didn't really need a planning model for that. But for the Gruesome Gulch, I definitely did, and this came in very, very handy. This was very useful to figure out things, especially in the Cadaver Caverns area back here, uh, the different layers and levels of track. Figuring all that out and how viewers would be able to experience that uh, through the back of the layout, that was the main reason for building this. Here's a more simplified planning model I built for an unbuilt uh, layout called the Skull Rock and Neverland. Uh, I might build this someday. This is an HON30 layout. And for this one, this planning model was really to figure out the cabinet that the whole thing was meant to fit inside of. It had a little roof with the built-in lighting and all that. So that was the main purpose of this planning model. The layout itself is pretty simple, just a, just a figure eight. One of the more elaborate planning models I've done is this one for the Bandit Canyon Railway. This was for the original uh, 132nd scale Bandit Canyon Railway that I would planned. I later decided to change it to ON18, but as you can see, a lot of the features uh, carried over from this design to the layout that I'm building now. Uh, the Sundance Mine, the arch across the canyon, the bridges, Robber's Roost here, all of those details were replicated on uh, the actual model railroad. To get started on our planning model today, I have some printouts here of the different sections of the layout. And I printed several of them so I can layer them up similar to how I did the Gruesome Gulch here. And I printed these out at a scale of uh, one inch to the foot. So each one of these squares is one inch square and that's going to equal 12 inches on the actual layout. I'm going to start on this by creating a facsimile of my backdrop. So I've got some light blue foam board here. This is 3 16 of an inch thick. And I've got a brand new blade in my utility knife. So I get a clean cut on this without any pilling. That's really important. Uh, foam board is going to make your blades dull really fast when you're cutting a lot of it. Now I'll mask off the sky portion. I'll make the rest of the mask with some scrap paper. This uh, Rust-Oleum flat red primer is actually a pretty good match for the oxblood color that I have on the lower half of the walls here, so I'm going to use that. While the paint is drying on those backdrop pieces, I thought I'd go ahead and get started this is some 3 16 of an inch thick foam board also, but this has an adhesive backing on it. We'll give this a shot and see how this goes. So I'm just cutting out the general shape here now. You know, getting all the right angle cuts first. And then I'll go back and get this more, you know, 
jagged edge there, the curves and the more complex shapes. Now I'll do the same thing with the next piece of the puzzle, which is the living desert section. And then the Thunder Mesa and the Calico sections, same thing. Okay, slide these together and get the basic shape of the layout. The paint is dry now, so I'll pull the masks off. We've got a nice clean line here. To add more stability to this, I've also created a section of floor out of the same 3 16th of an inch thick foam board. And to put these pieces together, I'm just going to use some uh, white glue. Put this sidewall in. Here I want to use a couple of these shirt pins, push that in through the back. Do one of these is about every two inches or so. Awesome. I can set this backdrop aside and concentrate on finishing the rest of this. So now I have a second printout, section number two, the Living Desert section, and we'll cut it out. But this time, as you can see, I've got a deep canyon represented here. This is the back part of Coyote Canyon. So I'm going to cut this out and basically cut it out so that this piece will represent where the track level is. So now I can use this piece as sort of a template to cut the different pieces of foam core that are going to make up the layers of the canyon between this top, which is the track level, and the bottom of the canyon, which is I'm just going to build it right up like that. Now I just need to decide how deep the canyon is going to be. And I would like it to be about close to 100 feet deep at, at scale. So 24 inches deep, thereabouts. So that would be, what, 96 inches, 96, uh, 96 feet in O scale, excuse me. Pardon me while I think out loud here. <laughs>close to a two foot deep canyon there took a minute now obviously on the actual layout I'm not gonna stack layers of foam like this you know all the way across just in the canyon area this will all be hollow under here this was just the easiest way to do it and have it all come out you know flat and level and even and speaking of flat and level and even as you can see some you know variations creeped in along the edges no matter how careful you are that's going to happen but fortunately uh, foam core is pretty easy to sand just take uh, my sanding block and go around and flatten off all of these edges so everything meets up properly all right so that's going to work for all the below grade scenery but what about above grade well we do the same thing uh, I've got another one of the printouts, 
and I'm just going to use one part of it here because I just need this part with the O and 18 going through here. got this up to a spot now where I can uh, set it aside and move on to the other sections of the layout. I do want to come back and add some more uh, detail to it, you know, including some paint. I did want to show you here I added a bridge back here. Uh, and this is just a piece of the printout that I adhered to some Bristol board. So it's much thinner. It's only about, I don't know, 64th of an inch thick. And, uh, you know, just a nice little bit of extra detail back there. It just looks better than having it cut from foam core. So starting on the Big Thunder section here, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. But I don't think it's going to be as complex as this one. So I'm taking another printout of the plan and adhering it to the foam board. So I can use one of the two of these as the base and then, you know, build the track level up on top of that. Once again, I'm just, uh, you know, looking at where the bridges are going to be. And that tells me the parts I need to cut out. So when one piece lays on top of the other, you get that three-dimensionality there. So I just finished cutting out Coyote Canyon for the track level, but I'm going to have to do something a little bit tricky here because the bottom of this canyon is the same depth as this, but the rest of the layout, um, this uh, rest of this section is not. So I need to cut this part, and this will form the the bottom of the canyon just like it does here. Once you start doing this, it really <laughs> it really forces you to think in three dimensions, you know, to figure this out. All right. So now this piece can go on top of this. And now this one can go on top of this. I'm really liking this adhesive back foam core. It's making this go a lot faster. Now this is just, you know, this is a fairly rough approximation of what's over there on the layout. I'm not going for exact scale accuracy in these, uh, you know, these depths, these distances. Just close enough to give me a good visual idea of uh, how this is going to look uh, once it's all together. Now I just need to build up the layers of this canyon section. From the bottom up. There's two ways to do this. You can either build it from the top down like I did with this one or you can build it from the bottom up like I'm doing here. Either way it's really important to trace the next piece, <laughs> the shape of the next piece, onto some foam board, the next piece of foam board, before you glue this piece down. All right, well now I can go ahead and start on the higher level of track, the ON18, which runs along here, just like I did on this section. So again, I need to use a couple of layers of foam core to build this up to the approximate six inches of height uh, above the main line that this ON18 line needs to be. And what I do is, you know, I, I, I cut out the main shape first, but this one actually includes parts that I'm going to cut out later because I want it to be you know, like Dinosaur Gap over here. This is actually lower. So I include that on there to just to use as a template 
trace it onto the next piece and then before I stick this down on here I'll cut this part out so it'll be revealed down below at the at the lower level. Here I have the advantage in this that I already know what this looks like. <laughs> this part of the layout's already built so I don't have to guess and just turn around and look at it. Like, oh yeah that's lower or that's higher. I've got this short little length of Owen 18 bridge right here. And once again, I've uh, laminated the printout to some Bristol board. Okay. Now I can build up the rest of the buttes and formations and stuff, which is some scraps of foam core. Now this foam core is not the easiest thing in the world to carve, especially with little pieces like this, but I think we can get in there general vicinity of Baxter's Butte. Naturally, we have to have the arch, too. Okay, well, that's the two main sections of the layout done, and all that's left is the Thunder Mesa section and the Calico section to do. But by now, I think you've got a pretty good handle on how all of this goes together. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to where we build a base for this and do the final finish work. Now, with all four of the sections done, I want to go back and paint all of this rock work, these layers of foam core I put in here. This is an extra step. You know, you don't have to do this, but you could leave it black and white. But, uh, you know. I want it to look as much like the layout as I can so people can tell at a glance, oh, that's the, that's the Thunder Mesa layout. And, uh, you know, it helps me to visualize what the final scenery is going to look like. And the color I'm using here is some uh, Liquitex Basics Raw Sienna, which is very, very close to the actual scenic base color that I use on the layout. So I'm going to paint all the rock work, but I'm not going to paint over where the structures are. So I'll leave that, I'll leave that blank or leave it so you can see the printout. I'm not going to model the structures on here. That's, that's a level of craziness that even I'm not going to go to. <laughs> but uh, everything else is going to get painted. So what I want to do is paint right up uh, to the edge of the roadbed and the structures and things like that indicated on my drawing. And some of you may be wondering why I didn't just, you know, print this out, print these layers out in color. Well, I could have done that, but then I would have had the task of trying to match the paint color to the uh, to the printed color so i would have ended up repainting it anyway <laughs> so you might as well just do it in grayscale which as you're working on it tends to be a little less visually confusing at least for me uh, it makes it easier for me to remember what's what and where things are and with that done i want to come back with a lighter shade this is some apple barrel light mocha do things like the roads, basically building this up just the same way I do my layout maps in Adobe Photoshop, but this time I'm doing it 3D with paint. And next, I want to represent all of the water and the different creeks and rivers and things. So I've mixed up sort of a bluish green. The trickiest part is painting under these bridges. Can't forget old unfaithful. And the hot springs back in here in Geyser Gulch. Now I just want to go back and add all of these tunnel portals. And, you know, that's basically just spots of black paint. Just to show where the opening will be. And I'll use some black here, too, to just indicate where the opening of 
Rainbow Caverns is. Now I'm using some dark brown paint. This is uh, Liquitex Burnt Umber to simulate the look of fascia boards on here where they would logically be on the layout. And this should give the whole model a nice finished look when I'm done. For the bases on these, I'm making some foam core boxes for them to sit on that will get them up to the right height, the scale height uh, of 52 inches that the layout sits at. I'm not going to uh, bother to you know, accurately model <laughs> the actual benchwork stands. I know how those are going to get go together, so I don't need to, it's not something I need to do for this. And this will look nice and work just fine. I'm just going to glue this right onto the bottom. And that is going to bring it up pretty darn close to the height it needs to be at scale. So there's four, that's 48, yep, about 52 inches. Perfect. The stands on the Calico and Thunder Mesa sections need to be considerably taller since they don't have uh, the big canyons down underneath. I'm setting these back by about six inches on the front and the sides. Now I'm gluing the, you know, the tops to these stands, but in reality, they will be bolted on. It'll be easy to take them on and off if I need to. Okay. Not bad. Now I can go back and paint all of these stands with some uh, flat black acrylic. I want to add a little bit uh, more variation to the colors of these rocks, so I'm just going to do just like I would on the big layout, on the real thing. Gonna dry brush on some lighter tones. This is just a little bit of uh, unbleached titanium, one of my favorite colors for scenery, mixed with that raw sienna. I'm not going to go crazy with it, just a little bit here and there to add some variety. Just a little bit of contrast really helps to bring it out and give it that southwestern desert look. I'm not going to add the structures, but there is one more thing I can add that will help bring this to life a little bit. Got a couple of different colors of ground foam. Got some lighter green and some darker green. The lighter green can represent the cottonwood trees, and the darker can represent the junipers and the pinyon pines. time to put everything together with the backdrop panels I built earlier. Almost forgot one more thing. I also made this guy, which is kind of a silhouette of a six foot tall human, just to see how the space will relate to full size people in it, what the sight lines will be. So some final thoughts on this project. What did I learn? Was it worth doing? Well, I learned a couple of things already. Uh, for one thing, I've got a road to nowhere 
the kind of just dead ends at the edge of the canyon there. I didn't even notice it on the 2D drawing, but here it's perfectly evident. I also am going to need to add a little bit more backdrop down below where Coyote Canyon uh, goes so deep there. Uh, but this is going to be an invaluable tool, I think, moving forward on the project. I'll be able to refer to this and look at the sight lines and think, oh yeah, that's what I was thinking right there, or maybe I want to change this or that. If you're going to build uh, anything more complicated than, you know, a flat piece of plywood, I highly recommend taking the time, a day or two, to put together a planning model. It doesn't need to be anywhere near as elaborate as this, but I think it's a really good idea. And one more thing before we wrap up, you might have noticed I didn't include any grades. I didn't indicate grades on the planning model, and that's because most of the grades on Thunder Mesa are negligible. But if you wanted to add grades, it would be pretty easy to do. You just laminate one of the copies of your plan to something more flexible, like some Bristol board or something like that, and that way you could, you know, create the rises and the ups and downs of the grade as it moves around through the landscape. Wouldn't be that tough. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And also, you know, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more from Thunder Mesa Studio. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and find out what is new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And as always, if you really enjoy what we're doing here at the channel and would like to show your support, you can do what these fine folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.